No way, no way. <laughs> oh my god. At first glance, you might think that a hamster in the Overwatch cast would be a bit out of place, but I think after playing him, you're going to have a ball. Especially after a few easier heroes added to the Overwatch roster, it's very exciting and compelling to see one with such a high skill ceiling and high skill floor. And what that means is, very similar to a character like Doomfist, you're going to have to have a strong grasp over the moveset of Hammond, or else you are just going to feed and do nothing. That's why I think this guy is so important. We're going to be taking a look at the gameplay of both Jesus and Mendo, who streamed the new hero for hours on end, practicing the limits of the character's potential and showing us a lot of really cool tactics on how to make the most out of the character. We're going to go over the specifics on how to manage each of his abilities to maximize their potential in isolation, but to start, I want to give a general overview of what you should be thinking your role is as Hammond, or else you might be getting a little lost. If you approach Hammond as if he's D.Va, assuming that his primary fire is the best way to try to utilize what he does, you're going to be kind of missing the point. Hammond's playstyle is a bit of a mix of Winston, Doomfist, and a little bit of Tracer, but all of that wrapped into a new type of tank form, which takes the concept of dive tanks into a more specific direction. Hammond is about disruption, initiation, and zonal control, and that's what our main focus is going to be with this new character. If you're just picking him up, you might find his abilities to feel a little weak, especially with how straightforward getting kills with D.Va or Winston can be, just jump on a target and it dies. Hammond is a little bit more tricky, but once you master his moveset, you can see that he can accomplish even more than those characters can if you put enough skill into him. Although jumping and flying as Winston and D.Va is very straightforward, it also has a smaller cap on its potential. And although your primary weapon is a little bit weaker than theirs is, Hammond's physical abilities can do more damage than theirs can. And very Sneakily is one of the better CCs in the entire game. Yes, more crowd control. Sorry about that, everybody. And although, generally speaking, Winston and D.Va don't struggle to go dive Widowmaker, she still has the ability to counter them, especially if she can land a headshot from far away. Hammond ducks his head hitbox and moves way faster than they can, making for him to be an even more devastating dive tank. However, he doesn't have any team tanking, necessarily, other than the space he creates with his abilities for himself. This makes for the meta implications of the character to be a bit tricky, but we'll worry about that later and definitely discuss more in later videos. And for now, focus on how to make big plays with Hammond. This clip on Ilios Ruins to disrupt the oncoming retake is a typical example of the types of things you're looking for when playing Hammond or Wrecking Ball. Just so we're clear, I'm gonna keep calling him Hammond, all right? Moving on. Because you don't provide a shield, a barrier, or really any other supportive kit as a tank to your team, you have to get active in fights in order to control, boop, harass, and sort of dig your way through the team fight to try to find an exploitable target. And you see here, the strongest ability that Hammond has in order to confirm kills is Pile Driver, because it's one of the best set up crowd control abilities in the game. Normally we talk about knock back, this one has a knock up in a really big radius, which is probably the most important thing about it, knocks everybody up in the air like bowling pins for your teammates to knock down, or of course yourself. This is the the first thing that you're going to want to focus on learning how to do, because if you don't, you're probably not going to be able to kill anything, because the rest of his abilities don't do much damage, although you need to optimize them as well. Ideally, what you want to do is find a squishy target and land directly on them, and if you directly hit them, it can do up to 100 damage, which is a really big deal. That's half of a squishy's health bar, and you're CCing them into the air, making it easy for you to burst them down yourself, or to set them up for a teammate to do lethal damage as well. You could do the pile driver by simply just being above your target and dropping down. Keep in mind, it does pause you in air for a second, so it's not so great to escape. It makes your movement path a bit predictable, but it is your strongest offensive weapon that you need to continuously look for ways to set it up. Hitting your targets for the damage is really important, but the higher level team play of this as well is that you can use it to knock the right targets up in the sky to set up for some really interesting combos that I'm sure will be developed over time. Here, Mendo and his team gets knocked in the air
there, setting up for an easy high noon. And in theory, if they were able to separate them from their barrier, especially Orisa barrier that stays stationary on the ground or split them off from their Rhine and their shielding, this type of combo would be quite repeatable, you'd think. For my money, the best one to punch for this is a Orisa halt into the pile driver, which is going to help maximize the damage from it, as well as continue the chain of that CC effect for further damage that you might want to be doing. This is what Guru and Jane accomplish in this clip. Now, before we move further, it's important that we nail down the mechanics of how to execute Hammond's movement, because we're gonna be seeing the pros do all sorts of nifty tricks that are gonna be beyond our grasp if we don't actually know how to execute them ourselves. First thing, rolling normally gives you a significant speed advantage, but the real key is combining it with the grappling hook to speed yourself up. This gets you around faster, but also is one of your most important offensive tools, turning yourself into a bowling ball to knock into your enemies, to displace them, and to do a reliable 50 damage a pop into each one you hit. Not too complicated, you don't have to incorporate jumps or anything, just latch onto a wall and launch yourself forward, and as long as your movement isn't interrupted, you can keep the max speed for about a good second, allowing yourself to turn a little bit and direct your wrath against your enemies or wherever you need to go. Now the next step to this is to launch yourself in the air by using the grappling hook at a higher angle or attaching onto a bridge or something, letting yourself swing and let her rip. You want to take some time to get comfortable with detaching from the environment so that you control when you start to launch yourself, because as you keep moving, if you stay tethered, you're going to continue down that turn, whereas a lot of times you want to actually launch yourself and get enough lift in order to get up into the air. Getting a lot of air is important because obviously high ground is just a big deal in general, but Wrecking Ball's best offensive move, Pile Driver, requires you to land on your opponent and does more damage if you directly hit them. So combining the swing to launch yourself to set up for Pile Driver is one of the best things you can do in combat. You'll see you only can activate Pile Driver when you're in the air enough to do so, and you'll want to be looking down so that you can actually see and line up what you're going to be hitting. Then you're going to have to be able to quickly react to your opponent getting bobbled up into the sky for about a second in which time you want to respond quickly to get your guns and melee attacks onto them to try to burst them down as fast as you can. That is your damage window and the best burst damage you can get out of Hammond. For the most advanced play, you can try to combine arcing a swing into the air, pile driving down, then finishing them with your primary fire. Combining all of those moves together is when you start to look really scary as the mech-wielding hamster. A few more tricks, often you'll see the best Hammond players tether themselves to either a post or a payload and set up like this. We'll explain why this is important later in the video, but for now, how to actually do this, there's two ways. You either can, one, look where you're going and just keep holding W and moving your mouse to turn to look in the direction that you're going so that you keep your momentum, or the other option takes a little bit of walking and chewing bubblegum type coordination, but you can allow your mouse to roam or even look around as long as you use your movement keys appropriately to move in the correct direction to keep your momentum going. This is important because you want to reach top speed for as long as possible, and if you mess up during this, you might lose it, which also loses your ability to do damage and move as fast as you can. The other tether you can do is on bridge-like structures where the same principles apply, but it's a little bit more disorienting to continuously fling yourself up in the sky. The same two principles apply. Looking where you're going helps you keep the momentum, but since that you're not simply on the ground, but in the sky, it can be easier to throw yourself off and veer off into another direction. Not to mention, of course, as you start to hit stuff and abilities hit on you, you can get body blocked and disrupted anyway. But in any case, you'll want to practice both of these types of tethers because the better you get at controlling them, the more you could combine multiple hits to be able to take out an opponent like Mendo does to this Genji who dares to fight him inside of a closed room. Another major use of the grappling hook is to set yourself up for big spider pine flanks on the outside edges of the map. This takes a ton of practice and the streamers I've been watching have been trying all sorts of different maps and locations and even combining with speed boost in order to get even further distances to launch themselves on some major flanks. This entire skill set could have multiple videos on its own right, just like different rollouts with Doomfist. This is a higher tier of understanding the hero and something that the masters of Hammond will start to learn as time goes on. One last tip that I want to point out mechanically that you can do that I haven't actually seen the pros try to do, so I wonder if it 
either isn't good or they don't realize they can do this. Jeff Goodman pointed this out on the Seagull stream that you actually can whip out your cannons while you're mid-air after you launch yourself, then decide to pile drive thereafter. Since I haven't even seen people try this yet, I think this could be really strong and even increase the bird of prey intense initiation that Hammond can do. And the last mechanical tip is that you can reload while you're in your ball form. That's really important. Not only can you overlap the animation with your reload so that as you start to reload, his weapons actually go into the ball and you can escape while reloading. That's really good. But you also can just hit the reload key while in ball form. Don't forget to do that while you're swinging around and doing everything else so that you hop out in combat. You have your weapons ready and waiting. That's really important. Now let's get into some examples and specifics of how to utilize these techniques. On a map like Control Center, where there is a post in the center that allows you to just spin freely, chaining your max speed forever, can be a great way to stage for an engagement. Staging is a term that applies to setting up for the team fight, most typically with dive characters. For example, Winston wants to get to a good place to dive from that is safe and also can help him reach where he ultimately wants to go. But the problem for characters like Winston and Diva that Hammond kind of doesn't have is that when they look around and are setting up to stage, they have big head hitboxes that the enemy can see from quite a distance, whereas Hammond can, although this does look ridiculous, but he can stage by setting up some point presence on a payload or on the control point to use his hook, keeping him on the ground, maintaining his max speed. And when he has max speed and knocks into someone, it does 50 damage, which is quite important. If you're able to hit that on a couple targets or a key target and then initiate onto them, all of a sudden you start to get the type of impact that the other dive characters have a bit more naturally where they slam into someone and start off that initiation a little bit up in the exchange of damage. And I can't stress enough, not only is it one of the best ways for you to get your reliable damage off, there's also the opportunity cost of it all that is a huge advantage for Hammond because at any point he can detach from his swinging shenanigans in order to isolate a squishy target and go after them and then while combining with his other movement and shielding ability, get the heck out of there. Now it's not always going to be so simple that you have a bridge to swing under or a post to spin around. If you don't have any of those easy bits of geometry to use, you're going to have to get a bit creative on ways to launch yourself in the sky or to get yourself around because if you're not enabling top speed to both move faster but also be a threat with your physical damage, you're really not going to get the full potential of what Hammond can do. Not only for damage but also with presence in the team fight, being able to flow from attacking their backline to peeling back to deal with enemy flankers and squishies or to keep yourself alive in a hectic team fight as you try to get away and avoid damage when you're getting focused. Most commonly what you're going to want to do is set yourself up to actually be like a wrecking ball, swinging like a pendulum to really get some distance and oomph to launch yourself in the air because of course pile driver is your strongest ability, but also there's a bit of a vertical advantage to seeing over the battlefield, picking out your target, etc., etc. Here we see J3 combine this constantly to get himself in and out of the fight quite fluidly, but you can even combine with Lucio's speed boost to get even more momentum to go for really long flanks. Gets himself all the way into the enemy's backline respawn and we keep using your movement like this you have presence in every relevant battle in a way that other tanks couldn't dream of and it's using his mobility this way that allows for the really good Hammond players to make space as a tank because you go off and challenge these squishies to either outright kill them or zone them into predictable paths that your teammates can exploit. Now let's move on to more play-by-play, -play, but this time a little bit more specific onto the decision-making of how Jesus moves in and out of the map and what specifically he's doing to have such effect on the battlefield. It should be said that he was playing in customs for a lot of this, so he's not going up against the highest level competition in these games, but it's clips like this one on Gibraltar that can show you how he can doggedly pursue key targets on the perimeter or key parts of the map especially when he sets up these really money grappling hooks. I think that is the difference between having impactful Hammond play and standing around a bit too much and being inefficient. Whenever a character has mobility power, it gives them options. And finding these key grapple locations that either get you on top of the ship or swinging from a bridge always gives you the power to either go back or forward 
even faster than the dive tanks could, because think about it. Not only is Hammond's cooldown faster, he also goes in ball form, which speeds up his run as well. It's this distance control that is the real kicker of what makes Hammond good. A key thing to point out, D.Va, when using thrusters, moves at 12.5 meters a second, Hammond just rolling is 10, and he can do it forever. Then you add that in with constantly grappling to and fro, it's like Hammond has the mobility presence of a permanent primal raging Winston. It's almost that severe in how quickly he can move across the entire map and be wherever he needs to be. Although I'm not a huge fan of him on defense, when the map has a very specific location like this, where the cart is going underneath, and the defense definitely wants to get on the high ground of the church here, these massive arcing grapples might as well be a teleport. As you go Sonic the Hedgehog mode, gotta go fast from their backline into your backline in the matter of a second. I think the team comps that will need to evolve in order to counter Hammond will either need the entire team to be mobile or to play in a more death ball style of way because you can just see in these situations where the enemy DPS goes on flanks and abandons the backline with his mobility you can change from killing the backline to saving yours before the enemy's flank is even properly set up. This clip on Li Zhang is one of my favorites because there's just so much going on in it. He doggedly pursues the Reaper to punish him on an outside flank. Keep a timer in the back of your mind to remember the 10 seconds it takes for him to come back because soon as the Reaper is trying to leave the choke, he's already able to challenge him again. Now, he doesn't take this duel. Reaper's actually pretty strong against Hammond, as he is with most tanks. You kind of have to zip around him like a tracer would. So at that point, he goes for this hilarious mad flank around the backside. But once he gets the drop on somebody, he's just so durable that as long as he hits his offensive abilities, he's going to get that kill and you're not going to kill him if he has his cooldowns up. And the most brutal play is the swing back on this to punish the res. It's crazy how you can make it seem like you're retreating as Hammond and then go right back in with the swing back and then in two seconds get back to the point and although he's not a great tank for a few seconds at least he really provides some point presence with that adaptive shield. To further show this point here's another clip from a different Li Zhang game that shows this process of really maximizing the movement to constantly find the backside of the fight. This honestly reminds me of Shadowbird's Genji play on Li Zhang in the Overwatch League. If you keep rotating with your movement to find the flank angles to force the enemy me to turn around, it's a nightmare for them to push into a choke anyway. You can go from swinging to and fro to the left side, coming right back onto the point, clean up that mess, and then propel yourself right back out to deal with the stragglers as well. Really cool stuff, and just like how Primal Rage is quite difficult to get any use out of until you really learn the mechanics of it, the movement of Wrecking Ball is like that times five. Now I'm going to discuss some downsides about Hammond, and the biggest one is that I think he's not very good on defense as a principle because he's got to be active, right? He needs to go harass to make any space for his team because he doesn't give any normal tanking, no static barrier, no real way to punish enemies that are aggressing onto your team. He's the aggressor. He has to be making active plays all the time, which although can find him getting a lot of kills oftentimes, it doesn't keep his team alive. So a lot of times, ends you up in a base race type scenario where you're going at the enemy's backline, but they're getting yours, and it's going to be difficult for you to stabilize, which is quite important in order to set up for really strong defensive holds. I think this principle will work its way out, and the only time I can see Hammond working on defense is as a bit of an enforcer tank, sort of like D.Va plays sometimes, where there's a key bit of high ground that the enemy wants to get to, but you can just deny them access to it over and over. And as long as you can get that spatial control, and that's in important to the map, then he can look good. However, a lot of times you need more raw firepower or pure tanking. And remember, a character like D.Va both does more damage and denies a ton of damage with Defense Matrix. You've got to be using Hammond in order to exploit his massive mobility advantage and durability for himself, which much of it comes from his shielding ability, which I know I haven't even mentioned yet, but we will get to it in a moment. Here's another example of Mendo in a scrim showing sort of the risk and reward of playing Hammond on defense. Staging up for a counter engage, as long as you get a sweet pile driver off, a lot of initiation damage, you can find yourself counter engaging into the enemy's push quite successfully. The only problem is when they start to realize where you have to fight and the fact that you are going to come after them eventually. They either can try to catch this engagement or to avoid entirely the best places for you to fight. Holding first on Kings here looks promising until the enemy stops going outside where Hammond can do his pile driver setups and instead they rush through the hotel where isn't the vast jungle 
jungle gym Hammond would prefer to be fighting in, kind of run past all the presence he has and gets on his team. And just by the nature of where Hammond wants to play and how he kind of plays for himself a lot of the time, he can't really do anything to stop this. And in general is going to be needing to set up for engages outside whenever possible because he's not going to operate well in chokes. He doesn't hold his ground that well either. He's a dive tank that needs to find those out in the open engagements, which you might think Winston and Diva need too, but Hammond needs it even more because they have some tanking abilities that at least can do something in those different engagement types. Now, the last two abilities that I haven't mentioned at all yet, his shield and his minefield ultimate will cover next. Adaptive shield grants 100 shielding by itself, plus 100 for every enemy that's in close proximity to Hammond. This means that it is indeed possible to have 1300 HP if you time it right. Yeah, that's incredible. Not to mention it's shields, not health actually. So the enemy doesn't get ult charge from shooting it and Sombra, if she EMPs it, destroys it just like a Reinhardt barrier. So it is a barrier of sorts, but just for you. Now there's a couple different philosophies on how to utilize the shield. And you might be thinking trying to do hard engages into their entire team so that you get the max value out of it and a ton of shielding. The only problem is if your engagement is kind Kind of dumb, the enemy is going to be able to whittle through even that much health, even though it sounds like an infinite amount. I mean, think about it. Hammond, as he sets up to use his weapons, is way slower than a Winston primaling, and we've all seen a primal raged Winston get melted if he engages improperly. So you aren't just going to be able to face tank all of the damage in the world, and what we've seen a lot of the pro players do is use it as a backup option when something doesn't work out their way, or they just know they're going to be taking extra damage, especially when the enemy thinks you're low and is going to try to change their target focus onto you, you pop the shielding to get the heck out. That's when it's going to look the strongest as an escape tool, not necessarily as an initiation tool. That's not the biggest value of it. It's better to try to lure their attention towards you and use it to make a narrow escape. And here's a few examples of Jesus doing this. He's going in deep, actually trying to get on the window to flank the Widowmaker. Doesn't work out, but he's able to pop a few hundred health as he gets through this choke and rolls himself out of there. It's really hard for the enemy to focus you down after they've already done a few hundred damage to you because it takes a lot of their cooldowns and ammo, and a lot of that's going to be either reloading or recharging, so that big burst of extra health often is going to get you out of harm's way. Here we see him again try to go for a pile driver engage a few times and his team starts to lose the fight. He's losing his momentum with his grappling hook, which makes this really hairy, but he's able to pop the shields just in time to give himself an extra burst of life to get out of the way. He was down at 15 HP here and hits it with three enemies nearby, giving him 400 health, running back to help charge his support ult. See, it's really the combination of using all those movement tactics we covered earlier in with these key moments to time the shield so that you survive without some health to come back to your healers who are going to love getting more ult charge off of you. As you start to combine the really good movement mechanics to get yourself in and out of combat with your free durability button in the adaptive shield, it's going to expand the margins of error that you have and open yourself up to do even riskier plays, which I think you gotta do with Hammond because if you try to play him too straight up, as a normal tank on the front line, you're not going to get anything done. You have to be going for these wonky maneuvers in order to catch out your opponents because he isn't as pound for pound effective in a brawl as any of the other tanks, quite frankly. Now, the last section, we'll talk about ultimate usage. There's a few simple ones that I think many of you probably have already thought about. Combining with EMP or Graviton Surge can set you up for some major wombo combos, but the ones that I think are a bit less intuitive is using the minefield as a zoning tool to create a very favorable offensive engagement into the enemy team. Because of how aggressively you can just take whatever space you want, that means you can get your minefield on the objective or on a key choke or whatever critical piece of ground that you want, which is going to make it impossible for the enemy to hold their ground or in some cases retreat. Now, there are some tricks you can do with this the higher up in the air you are when you dispatch them the further they'll spread but in my opinion I think on the objective you'd much rather them clustered closer to the cart or the point and when you combine with Hammond's ability to swoop in and out of the battle using his mobility to have a lot of point presence and these mines added into the mix and the chaos of it it makes it really hard for any stalling character to stand a chance coming in to dance around the payload like a jerk when there's deadly mines all over 
over the place. There's a lot of question marks over how viable Hammond actually is, but I think this ultimate, with its guaranteed spatial denial, is so good that as long as you're able to satisfy the other skill components of the character, I gotta think that this will see a lot of play on a lot of maps, especially ones that are really hard to close out, because he just is so good at taking space and then denying it with the ultimate. Well, guys, that's everything for this Hammond Advanced Guide. We've covered a lot of bases today, but there's still way more to figure out with the character. Obviously, I look forward to seeing how the top level players really expand the limits of what you can do with this character, because he's just so fun to play. And when you do get his impact off, it's just so much fun. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're going to want to hit the bell icon so that you can notify when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter, where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito. For your Overwatch, I'll see you guys next time.